meeting of the Hammond County Legislative College of Order. It's our regular scheduled meeting here on October the 20th, 2020. I'd like to uh, call Mr. Hall, lead us in prayer, please, and as you do, uh, remember Commissioner D. Smith. Amen. Pray. Dear Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you for allowing us to come together as three people who decide to say uh, idols in our county. Father, we ask you to guide our minds, our thoughts as we go through this process. We don't take it lightly, and Lord, we put it in your hands. Father, we ask you to be with Wayne Neesmith as he goes through some health problems. We ask God that you will. Bring him peace and comfort, and then we join us soon. Father, now we ask your blessings, your guidance, and strength upon each of us. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark, attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. And we'll do roll call. We do have a quorum. Uh, ladies, we have one monitor or a couple of All four of these are off. Okay, are we working on that or? Please bear with us. We do have a quorum, so we will begin our agenda. Item one, we have no one for recognitions or presentations, and we'll move right to public comments from the uh, public regarding business of the agenda only. Does anyone like to speak? You have three minutes to do so. Benjanoe, 2343 Joe Stevens Road. First off, I'd like to thank you for putting public comments where they always were for decades. And now they're back where they should be before any agenda item is taken up. Second, I would like to commend Commissioner Howell for obtaining the trustees' reports and making sure now that they are in your packets. That is something that used to be in there. And then about, about a decade ago, no more reports. You had to ask for them, which I did at times, but they should have always been a part of commissioners' packets. And I appreciate the fact that that is going to be addressed now and will be in your consent calendar. The other item I'd like to talk about is 12D, the pay raises for election planning and road commissioners. As you know, there have been a series of raises for different groups, whether it's garbage or, collect or corrections officers, and then everybody keeps coming back. If I recall correctly, there was supposed to be a salary study, and there should be. It should not be piecemeal, well, so-and-so got so-and-so, so now I want this, where you're giving raises every month or every other month. And, and then there is no uniformity or, or study in preparation for that. 
I think, and some of you can perhaps recall better than I, that Mayor Britton mentioned a salary study at one point. Where is it? Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Is there anyone else that would like to address the commission? Seeing none, we will move to item three, nomination appointments. We do not have any. Uh, item four, Chairman Doty, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Item 4A, approval of the consent calendar items. I put that in the form of a motion. We have a motion. Chairman, I'm sorry. We need to. Um, I, I apologize, Mr. Chairman. Excuse me? Apologize. I was going to. Uh, yeah, we do have a motion and we have a second. Is there any discussion? Yes. Ms. Green, you are recognized. I have a question in regard to what's in our packet for the mayor. It was in last month's meetings. It is the letter from the comptroller's office regarding the budget that was submitted. And the bottom of the first paragraph, it says that we'd like to bring it to the following considerations to your attention. If I read it correctly, there's over 17 million and reoccurring expenses that they are concerned about. And I remember correctly, it's under the Highway and Public Works. I'd like to ask our mayor for a complete explanation, detailed explanation to exactly what that is. 17 million is a whole lot of money. Mayor, have you got any response to that? Uh, I, I'm not right at this moment. Right. If, if, if you had asked me before and I could have prepared, I could answer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can we pull that out then and not approve that? I, I don't. I mean, it, that's your choice by vote. We're, we have an agenda that we're going to continue with. Oh, I can't. I don't think I'm on that one to be too though. But. Well, that's fine. Um, that's fine. It's your choice. And uh, if you'd like to make a, a motion to pull that out, then we'll yes, sir. entertain that. Yes, sir, till we get a further explanation. Okay, um, Commissioner Green has made a motion that we remove this item. Uh, please explain your motion once again. I'd like to pull <coughs> that expense from the agenda to that, from the agenda, from the past meeting until we get a further detailed explanation of what the excessive 17 million entails across what funds and exactly what it is. It says reoccurring. That gives me some concern. Okay, when you say prior meeting, could you? Um, it was in September's meeting. Okay. I did not catch it till okay. I went through my packet well, today. Well, that is business. It's already been concluded. I don't know how we can actually do that. We're approving the minutes from that meeting. So if we don't approve okay. it, it can be pulled I'm, out. Okay, I got you. So we have a motion on the floor uh, to pull that out of the minutes uh, for a detailed explanation <clears throat> by the comptroller. I'm sorry. Well, first we have a motion. We need a second. Then we'll go to that. All right. Uh, we have a motion on the floor to pull that out of our minutes, the expense for a detailed explanation of 17 million of recurring expenses from the highway department. Do we have a second? Oh, do do? Uh, you going? Well, it's not on. It's not on. It's, uh, it's, it's, not, on, it's not on. It's off the board. I'm sorry. All right, Commissioner Howe has seconded. Now, do we have any discussion? By the way, it reads. They, that's the reason the letter was addressed to the mayor and all commissioners, that they had some considerations that they thought that we should look at. And if it is a reoccurring expense, that means, if, the way I understand it, it will hit every year. And if they're concerned that we've overspent, and I think that letter details it to that effect, we need to be good stewards of Hamlin County citizens' money. We need an explanation. I understand. We have a motion. We have a second. Is there any more discussion on this amendment by Commissioner Green? We haven't voted on the original. Well, we've got to clear this We're first, the and then first. we'll go back to the original. Yeah. 
Is there any other discussion on the amendment? I've so let's, one, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Mayor Britton, what is the entire budget for the Hamilton County Road Department? Yeah. Just a roundabout figure. So impossible to spend 17 million recurring every year if you only have a $4 million budget. Okay, thank you, sir. Any other discussion? May I speak again? Yes. It doesn't, it does not note just the highway department. It says all funds, highway and public works. Okay, your motion was for highway. Mm -hmm. For that particular, that particular item not to be approved because it was in last month's packet the, the motion that was on the floor commissioner green is for expense a detailed explanation of how 17 million in highway that's that's what you was saying and well, let me I, clarify i apologize i want an explanation of the letter that detailed an excess of 17 million between highway public works and across all funds across all funds that, that's what the that, letter says okay and i've got it pulled up if i need to show it to any of okay commissioners do we need to uh motion and second that again or are we all good with the addendum okay any other discussion you need to speak yes yeah. i have a question am i to understand we've already discussed this in september is that correct that's correct and we've already voted on this Yes. Earlier. The, the motion that she has on the floor is to approve our minutes, right. which has that in the minutes, and she is discounting the minutes. Thank you. So that is the motion. Any other discussion? So let's vote the motion that it is off the board, correct? I, just to clarify, we are voting the amendment that Ms. Green has and this is off the board this has nothing to do with uh, our approval of the consent counter this is only amendment to pull this off the minutes no chris cutshaw no thomas doty no edna green yes stan harville no bobby hoy no tim horner no joe huntsman no piggy Powell. yes Rodney Long? No. Mike Reed? No. Mike Richardson? No. Kyle Walker? No. Okay, the motion does not pass, or the amendment does not pass. We'll go back to the original motion now of um, the approval of the consent calendar. Commissioner Doty. We have a motion on the floor. We've got a second, and we are back to discussion of the consent calendar. Is there any discussion? So now we'll vote this motion. Eleven yay, two nay. And the motion passes. Item 4B, approval of the regular calendar items. And on that, you will notice from our committee meetings that items number 9 and 10 have been inserted in. Um, and I put that in the form of a motion. We have a motion for approval of regular calendar items with the addition of items 9 and 10. Do we have a second? Second by Mr. Long. Is there any discussion? Let's vote the motion, please. Twelve yay, one nay. And the motion passes. Item well, five. Uh, yes, thank you, Commissioner Doty. Uh, <laughs> item five A, approval of the consent calendar. Is there a motion? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. We have a second. Is there any discussion? Let's vote the motion, please, to approve the consent calendar. Thirteen yay, zero nay. 
and the motion passes. We will now recess as a Hammond County legislative body and we'll be open for public hearing um, re uh, regarding our urban growth boundary. Thank you, Steve. This is Steve Nielsen, everyone from the city public or uh, city planning. Yes. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, for those of you who are at the uh, meeting at Walter State, I promise I'll be brief so you don't have to rehear all this. This is not an annexation plan. I've had several calls over the last few weeks. This is this is not state law. Excuse me, Steve. Mr. Nelson, could yes, please apologize. Thank you. Yes, thank the you. State law specifically states we have to have a request in writing from the property owner before we can annex property. They can't come in and ask us, they can't call us and ask us, it has to be a written request. And because it's state law, we cannot vary from that in any degree. What this plan is, is a growth plan. Uh, this is kind of the area we'll be looking at that will we anticipate growth over the next 20 years. As you're aware, uh, we've seen a tremendous amount of residential growth over the last couple of years. Um, in addition, you know, we've been working with the IDB to identify a property for industrial development as the parks are, are filling up. So uh, the hope was with this coordinating committee is we'll take a comprehensive look at where growth is taking place and include them in the boundary. See, being in the boundary, all that means is the property owner has the right to request annexation assuming utilities are available. Um, where we, and like I said, I, I'll be quick through this because this is the same presentation I gave the other day. The process is basically five steps. Uh, at the beginning, where we're at, is each jurisdiction must have two public hearings uh, before we form the coordinating committee. And then the coordinating committee will prepare the growth plan, which will bring back to the city and to the county for ratification. And once those plans are ratified, it'll go back to the state for their uh, approval. Like I said, uh, we had our first public hearing on September 29th at Walter State. This is your second. Um, the city had its public, second public hearing on Tuesday. Uh, at, at this meeting is where we talk about the forming of the coordinating committee. Uh, if you look at, and this is out of state law, if you look at, this is who the, who's uh, re required to be on the coordinating committee. Uh, and if you look at the first highlighted line, the county mayor or his designee shall be confirmed by the legislative body. That, that is you to confirm that member. Other members that will be included is the, the city mayor or his designee. On Tuesday, Mayor Chesney was appointed to the committee. Um, others include Mike Howard of Morristown Utilities, Taylor Howington, who's general manager of the Russellville White Bird Utility District. Sonia Ricker with the Hamlin County Soil and Water Conservation District. Um, Hugh Clement with the school system. Marshall Ramsey, who's president of the chamber. And then two members will be appointed by this, the city and the county mayors. For the city, we had Ronnie Snyder and Amy uh, Hancock, who are both planning commissioners who also live in the county and uh, represent the uh, population in the urban growth boundary. So we thought that was a good mix. For the county, uh, Stan Harbaugh agreed to serve and uh, Mark Hicks with the Planning Commission. So that's who will make up this committee. As, as, like I said, it's for you to vote on who's next. Um, this, this is the property that started this whole process, <coughs> Doyle Wallace asked to be included into the city and unfortunately because he was outside the urban growth boundary we couldn't annex him even with a request so uh, we'll be looking to include or he's requesting us to include his area uh, since we started this process we've actually had requests from other people um, this is property uh, off of thompson creek road don bunches <coughs> 
also had uh, uh, Denny Miller's got property that abuts right up to uh, Frank Lorino Park, who also requested. We had another parcel, but uh, I'm glad I took it off. Well, we've had a request, but I haven't seen anything formal. So <coughs> there is interest. There are people who envision developing the property and the, uh, to develop anything more urban. You really need utilities, and you have to be within the city limits. So that's a quick and dirty overview of the, the process. If you all have any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, you mentioned that. Okay, so it's a written consent, and then assuming utilities are available. So when we look at this, uh, should this come to pass, how, how soon will they have those utilities? Well, when you annex property, uh, you know, if you, if you submit me a request for annexation, the, the, the question will be, if you're in the urban growth boundary, the, the answer will be, after communicating with the utility districts, can they provide you service in a, yeah. if they can't, then we can't annex the property. But generally, as part of this coordinating committee, you know, we've got the utilities, or the major utilities involved, and hopefully they'll be planning with us to, provide utilities to those service areas. Okay. I want to make sure in our last meeting at Walter State, we at Utility has the water for this area. That's and, correct. And we did discuss and it was it was I think made clear that Marshtown Utilities would leave that with they wouldn't request for that. That, that is correct. My understanding is, uh, regardless if it's in the city or in the county, if it's developed, it'll, what utility will provide services to it? It's my understanding as well. Utilities are always, will be available or it can't be annexed, but that would also come between the utility companies and their, their agreement of who may serve. Like Thompson Creek Road, that could actually be Russellville, Whitesburg, <laughs> utility right there it could be I'm not certain but that would be between them and not necessarily what we're thinking you're absolutely correct uh, when you look at Blossom Springs subdivision behind John Hayes that's served by Russell Russellville Wattsburg yes uh, so yes the only agreement we have is with Morristown Utilities if we if extend the city limits outside there's those jurisdictions to, to provide service yes um, but back to the question, when we annex property, one of the uh, requirements is we do a plan of services. Can we service them with water? Can we service them with police, schools? I mean, there's a whole list of uh, qualifications, and most of it's utility related. Mm -hmm. If we can't provide them, uh, then we generally won't annex the property. Understood. Any other questions from the commissioners? Thank you, Mr. Nielsen. We will now close our public hearing and reconvene as our Hammond County Legislative Body only to go to item 7 and recess as the Hammond County Legislative Body and open public hearing for the resolution 22 dash 24A resolution to amend the zoning map of Hammond County, Tennessee by rezoning district 03, tax map 019, parcel 020.16. That's at Old Russellville Pike and St. Clair Road, Whitesburg, Tennessee, from commercial one to agriculture one. Is there anyone that would like to speak in this public hearing? Seeing no one, we will close the public hearing and now reconvene once again as the Hammond County Legislative Body, moving to item eight, and we will take up a vote, entertain a motion for the rezoning resolution vote for what was just mentioned, the resolution 2224 to rezone uh, this parcel on Old Russellville Pike, St. Clair Road in Whitesburg from C1 to A1. Is there a motion? Motion. That would be uh, Mr. Horner. 
And a second. And yes, we have a second. Is there any discussion? We have a motion and a second for this resolution to be adopted. Do we have any discussion? Seeing none, let's vote the motion, please. And that motion passes. We will now move to item nine and recess as Hamlin County Legislative Body, and we will now convene as the Hamlin County Beer Board. We have before us a beer permit uh, for Rami Market, I hope I'm pronouncing that correct, at 8015 East Andrew Johnson Highway in Whitesburg. That uh, that market resides in my district. I have spoke, uh, or, uh, excuse me, I have reviewed the application for a permit and our county clerk, Peggy Henderson, has uh, said everything was in order. So, uh, is there anyone here to speak for this permit? Yes, sir. State your name for us, please. Well, we had the last time I did talk to you and make it clear everything. Even I did not know about that thing, so it just got a little bit miscommunication and stuff. Okay. Do we have any questions, commissioners? Everybody good? All minds clear? Thank you, sir. Any other questions concerning this beer permit? We will now close the public hearing of the Beer Board and reconvene as our Hamlin County Legislative Body. Item 10, Beer Permit Vote. Beer Permit for the Rami Market at 8015 East Andrew Johnson Highway, Whitesburg, Tennessee. <coughs> I'll entertain a motion. So moved, Mr. Chairman. We have a motion by Commissioner Doty. We have a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, let's vote the motion, please. Twelve yeas, one nay. The motion passes. Item 11, Chairman Tim Horner of the Jail, or the Justice Center Public Safety Committee, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, item 11A, change order number seven, and I put that in the form of a motion. We have a motion, have a motion. and we have a second. <clears throat> Is there any discussion? Seeing none, let's vote the motion. And the motion passes. Item 11B, County Inmate Labor Usage Agreement with the City of Marshtown, and I put that in the form of a motion. We have a motion, and we have a second. Is there any discussion on this motion of the County Inmate Labor Usage Agreement? Seeing none, let's vote the motion, please. Motion passes. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Chairman Horner. Uh, Chairman Hahn, the Finance Committee, sir, you are recognized. <clears throat> uh, item 12A, uh, approval of monthly checks. I put that in the form of a motion. We have a motion and we have a second. Is there any discussion? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Quick question. We've asked for a copy of the bills that have been uh, our lawsuits regarding the county, whether it's planning or whether it's the sheriff's department or whatever, I would like to see those come forward so we know exactly what we are facing as far as the liability for the citizens of Hamlin County. I mentioned this quite a, uh, at least two or three meetings back. It's about time that we seen them. Okay, let, let, let me understand. So you're asking, um, this is in discussion. You're not changing anything. You're, you're requesting 
information on the bills and exactly i mean it's in our packet i'm not certain exactly what detail our lawsuits are not noted i, I forgive me that i understand i understand so yes ma'am that that is forthcoming okay that is forthcoming i understand i thought you were regarding something else no the lawsuits that i i know planning when we attended the last planning meeting they were talking about how many lawsuits that they had went to court on but had not had any results on. I'd like to know exactly how many we've got in play there. I'd like to know how many we've got against the jail. The last count I had was 14. I'd like to know where we stand on that and exactly where it's at. Okay, I want to clarify once again your question. You're saying uh, in the planning that we have lawsuits and planning I, I misunderstood that one. I, I, I mean, um, we have cases, but are, is the Planning Commission been sued? Is that what you're saying? My understanding, they have taken some folks to court to sue to get them to take care of some things that were brought up up there. If I understood correctly, now, that, that's I probably said true in, there. Yes. Okay. Yes, I sir. thought you meant somebody was suing the county. No, sir. Okay. No, I misunderstood. Sir. All right. So we'll work on that information. Any other discussion? Seeing none, let's vote this motion, please. Thirteen yeas, zero nay. And the motion passes. Item 12B, resolution 2225, initial resolution authorizing the issuance of not to exceed $4,675,000 general obligation bonds of Hamlin County, Tennessee for the landfill expansion. And I put that in form of a motion. We have a motion and we have a second. Is there any discussion? Yes, Ms. Hatt. Uh, this is the one that uh, Mr. Rush will be taking care of and they'll pay it back, right? So, yeah, that's it. That's what I need. That's the one. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Let's vote the motion, please. <clears throat> Commissioner Green. Oh, I'm sorry. 13 yay, zero nay. And the motion passes. Item 12C. Resolution 2226, a resolution authorizing the issuance of general obligation bonds of Hamlin County, Tennessee, in the aggregate principal amount of not to exceed $4,675,000 in one or more series, making provisions for the issuance, sale, and payment of said bonds, establishing the terms thereof, and the disposition of proceeds therefrom and providing for the levy of taxes for the payment of payment of principal of premium, if any, and interest on the bonds. I put that in form of a motion. We have a motion and we have a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, let's vote this motion. Thirteen yeas, zero nay. And the motion passes. Item 12D, <coughs> pay raise for election planning and road commission to have the effective date November 1st. I put that in the form of a motion. And we have a motion, we have a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, let's vote this motion. And the motion carries. Item 12E, the purchase of voting machines. Put that in the form of a motion. We have a motion and we have a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, let's vote on this motion. 
13 yeas, 0 nay. Motion passes. Item 12 F, SIP service for new phone system, Mattel communications solution. I put that in the form of a motion. We have a motion and we have a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, let's vote this motion, please. And this motion passes. Item 12G, I, Budget Amendment Fund 101, County Commission, $5,250. I put that in the form of a motion. We have a motion and we have a second. Is there any discussion? Yes, sir. Can we have an explanation of what that is? Absolutely. That was in your packet, I'm quite certain, but... It was. That's for the, the voting system update. Yes, that's what I was thinking, but... Thank you. Yes. Thank Any you, other Mayor. discussion? Let's vote this motion, please. And this motion passes. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Chairman Hahn. Chairman Richardson with the Public Service Committee, sir, you are recognized. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> 13A, Urban Growth Coordinating Committee, and make a motion that we add uh, Mayor Britton to this committee. But that we have a motion. motion, and we have a second to confirm Mayor Britton as our representative. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, let's vote this motion. And one day, one day. This motion passes. Thank you, uh, Chairman. Uh, 13B, surplus items for the maintenance department. That's two uh, Ford F-150 vehicles. Make that in the form of a motion. They're getting uh, surplus. We have a motion and we have a second to surplus items for the maintenance department. Is there any discussion on this item? Seeing none, let's vote this motion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes. That's all I have. Yes, thank you. That motion passes. And now uh, we'll move to public comments of non-agenda items. Is there anyone that would like to address the commission? You can do so now with three minutes. Yes, ma'am. State your name, please. Your address. Could you pull that down just a little? There you go. Thank you. Cassie Slabicorn at 7329 Sweetbriar Drive. Yes, ma'am. Um, I don't really have anything to add to what we've already talked about before. We've presented a lot of problems with the noise coming from uh, Great Smoky Farm. And so far, uh, I don't have anything to add tonight, but I would like to know from you all if we're any closer to resolving that problem with a noise ordinance or anything like that. So I know y'all were gonna be researching some mm -hmm. things. So you complete your comments and I'll when it when you're done i don't want to interrupt you oh okay i'm finished that's all i had to say okay all right thank you and and to my understanding the mayor's office is working on a noise resolution that our committee our commission will be taking up and i understand sooner the better but yes ma'am it is being looked at is there anyone else that would like to address this commission West Point Drive. Uh, my question I want to know is, I really don't know for sure, but I have an idea. Uh, Wet Utility is the provider for uh, the urban growth out there at Wet. They are the water. They provide everybody's water all the way to Chestnut Hill. They're going to. So what I want to know is, if they get annexed into the city, are they still going to, is WIT still going to provide their water? 
That's what I want to know. That's the question. Because mm -hmm. you see, everybody else that's not in the urban growth plan out there, mm -hmm. they have to pay double rates for their water mm -hmm. and for their sewer. Because some of them are hooked up to sewer also. Because when they run the water out there to Mr. Wallace or the sewer out there to Mr. Wallace, they run it in front of our houses and we were not allowed to hook up to the sewer unless our septic tank tears up. And the state is the one that does that, not the county. Because it's against the law to work on your sewer if you have sewer running in front of your house from the city of Marshtown. So what I want to know is, I tried to get a hold of Mr. Harris, but me and him could never get together. I wanted to ask him if they did annex that out there, and if he lost his water rights, was he going to sell his water rights to the city of Marshtown so those people could be annexed into the city to get cheaper water rates? Thank you for your comments. Is there anyone else that would like to address this commission? Yes, sir. State your name, please, and your address. My name is Benjamin Harris. I'm the general manager of Witt Utility District. Yes. Uh, 1751 Shinbone Road is where my address is. I understand that there's been some concern about who's serving the water on this annexation, and the answer to that is Witt Utility. Yes, sir. We have a 16-inch water main with 160 PSI with 5,000 gallons a minute available pressure and water to that area, and we will serve anything in our district as we always have. And as far as concerning the rates, our rates are not double from everybody else. And so I have contacted um, people that call me back with no, no contact back. And so if you guys have any questions for us, I'll be more than happy to answer the commission now. It's our policy that we allow you to speak and, um, and Yes, sir, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know if I was supposed to speak <laughs> early, but on another note, I'd like to personally thank you guys for voting to uh, to give us $1.54 million for infrastructure improvements. We've laid 11 miles of water main and almost 21 fire hydrants in the wet community. So I just want to personally thank you guys for what you've done. And on a second note, as far as my expansion into Chestnut Hill, we were chartered into Hamlin County uh, back in the 50s. And even though this has nothing to do with your county, we're um, expanding into Jefferson County, $80 million water expansion. And so I'd like to personally thank Mr. Bill Britton for being a huge catalyst of making that happen, even though it's not in his county. He's making a lot of this happen uh, with giving people water that don't have it. So I'd like to thank all you guys for what you do. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to address our commission? Seeing none, commissioners, I have several announcements. If you will bear with me just a moment. First, our November committee meeting is Monday, November the 7th. Our November, November commission meeting will be November the 17th, both at five o'clock right here. All right, on October the 27th, please pay particular notice to this, that we do have tours that are existing for any and all commissioners for the new construction of the Justice Center and also the existing jail, if you want to take that. They are, uh, the morning tours are scheduled for 8.30 a.m. You meet in front of the existing Justice Center. The afternoon tours are scheduled for 4 p.m. Meet in front of the existing Justice Center. Please contact Trish and the mayor's office to confirm which one you would be attending. Also, on that same day, Thursday, October the 27th, commissioners have an opportunity to meet one-on-one -on -one with the design team to learn more about the design or ask questions. Contact Trish for that meeting. So that is open to any and all commissioners to have that opportunity if you like. Also, on another note, our lead architect, Brian Payne of Mosley Architects, will be here and plans to be here to attend the Justice Center committee meeting on November the 7th. So he'll be here for those updates and maybe we can question or ask a few questions of him. Um, finally, I have one last thing that uh, has been uh, 
uh, gathered up a couple commissioners have came forward and asked the chair the thoughts of this so I got a recommendation from uh, our Tennessee County Commission Association and we are offering on December the 12th a get-together for all commissioners and their husband or their wives and uh, a get-together that we can just have a little social time together it's not a meeting we're going to invite um, each commissioner and the press to be there just uh, we want transparency as far as that but but yet it is a time just to to fellowship and have that time so please put on your calendar December the 12th uh, details to be announced is Chairman Cutshaw yes well, earlier one of the citizens asked about the salary study I for one would like to have that and I'd like to see it and I think it would be invaluable for each and every one of us. I'd also like to ask a few questions if you don't care. I had emailed earlier Sheriff Mullins and thank you for coming, sir. And I will tell you everything I've heard is fantastic for you. My question to you is in our packets this month, we had a letter from TCI that the jail was going to be decertified. Did you get the letter? Because I'm assuming you, did, you didn't have it. I did not get the letter, no. I, My question is, would you give us a report as to what procedures that you intend to start to take care of the present problems? And I'm not talking about the jail. There's nothing you can do about that jail. That's a mess. That is a mess you inherited, sir, and I apologize to you on behalf of everybody for that mess. But according to the report I read, from TCI and it was not in our packets with the letter it would have been very helpful if it had been a lot of our problems are to do with paperwork and procedure not with the condition of the jail there's nothing you can do about the jail and I realize that but as far as the procedure violations I'd like to hear what intends to take care of it please I didn't get that letter so I don't know exactly what all you're asking but in 2005 the jail was decertified by TCI yes sir between 2005 and 2006, the sheriff at that time, along with the jail administrator and his assistant, went before TCI and requested to receive an extension to correct the deficiencies that caused the jail to be decertified at that time. A plan, a plan of action was developed, which consisted of the construction of the female annex and the annex built on the back section of the jail, where men were and are being housed to this time. Once the two annexes were built and inspected, the jail was recertified. In 2009, the Hamley County Jail was once again decertified. In 2010, the jail was again, again inspected by TCI, did not pass inspection, and remained decertified. Between 2010 and present, the jail has remained decertified, and no action has been taken since 2010, decertification to recertify the Hamley County Jail. In September of this year, I personally spoke with the inspector from TCI, and I was advised that there's no way this jail would ever be certified again due to the facility itself. Amen. There are many reasons for this, with the main reason being that the Hamlin County Jail is considered an underground facility, which is no longer approved for style of jail mm. or facility for TCI. Mm. So with that being said, the chief and I have been in Nashville and been in contact with TCI. At this point, the administration has put into place the first steps in receiving certification once the new jail has been completed. The first step, the plan of action, is to do a complete makeover of the jail policy and procedures. This consists of the Tennessee Correction Institute, TCI standards, and building of the Hamlin County Jail policy and procedures to mirror those standards. TCI has 191 standards, a majority of these standards has substandards, 243 substandards. With that being said, that means we have to write 434 standards to meet TCI's requirements for recertification. In addition to this, the administration will have to develop a transition policy, transitioning from the old facility to the new facility. This is nothing more than a written policy dictating on how the transition, the move from the old jail to the new jail will be done once the new jail is complete and be ready to move into. 
And once that move's been made, the transition policy be void. However, it will take numerous weeks to develop the policy and even longer to put it in place. And this is with the assistance of TCI. Yes, sir. Also, TCI requires that prior to the transition into the new jail, there will be practice runs to make sure that the transition goes smoothly and as planned for a transition policy. This means that once the new jail is close to being moved into, it will be all hands on deck. All employees will have to help with this, which translates into a lot of overtime at this time. Uh, this is just advising you the things that will be coming so you won't be surprised. But there's a, a whole new policy of procedures being redone uh, for that new facility with all the standards and substandards in it. Uh, TCI is involved in the build of the new facility to make sure everything's on track. So I hope that answered some of your questions. How many more folks will you have to have at that point? We will, we shouldn't right now, unless we, it's a 621 bed facility. And from what I've heard, it'll be 52. That's if we're fully staffed with 621 inmates. Wow. But right now, Tracy, what are we running? 180. I don't have any inmates we running around 280 right now. 280. Thank you, Sheriff. Very good. Thank you. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you, sir. All mine's clear. Any other commissioner have any additions? Commissioner Howe. I just want to thank you again for that. That was for someone who didn't get the, the letter. Thank you for that was very thorough. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Horner. You just add to, to that. Uh, he's done a lot. He and his and the staff over there have done a lot of work. They helped in the planning of this new jail. What they needed what they needed. Right. Take, taking mm -hmm. gotcha I agree with you the uh, shortcomings that they've been mounting through the years that's of course been addressed in our design and, and we'll have that opportunity to speak with the design team Commissioner Green if you like uh, that that will take in some of what we've dealt with any other commissioner yes Commissioner Doty uh, we were talking about staffing. Ms. Green asked that question, and the way I took it is that you were saying that the additional numbers of staffing would depend upon the additional numbers of inmates. Is that correct? That's the way I understand it. Okay. Thank you so much. It's not the design of the jail, but the number of inmates. <laughs> correct. Thank you. Commissioner, Ch um, Commissioner Ketchup. You have brought another question to my mind with what you just now spoke about. I realized that we had our last discussion about a contract attorney to deal with the jail and the jail bills. When will we have the opportunity to see who that is mm -hmm. and see what they've decided to do and report thereof? Yes, I think those negotiations are in process. I think maybe the mayor has spoke with this uh, potential uh, uh, attorney and we'll have that report I'm, I'm certain very soon then next 30 days, days? ma'am I can't answer that okay. we'll have to address the mayor's office for that what kind of cost will we be looking at at that point excuse me what kind of cost ma'am I'm sorry no we idea. do not know these things yet okay. this is all preliminary for me at this point could we count on a report from the mayor to update us so we could stay in the loop? We'll, we'll see where it as goes. As good stewards yeah. of Hamlin County? Well, I'm sure we'll have a report in front of us, Ms. Green, that will show us what the cost is. Anyone else? We are adjourned.